Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining our What is Business Central webinar. I'm joined today by uh, Jeff Warwick, who will be our presenter, and as well as Chris Young, who will be one of our panelists and helping uh, to, to answer any questions that you all may have. Um, as you'll notice on the bottom, I've left the, the Q&A section open, so if you have any questions as we're going along, uh, feel free to, to ask anything, and Chris and I will be here answering whatever, whatever we can. And with that, I'll hand it over to, to Jeff Warwick. Thank you, David. So yeah, this is Jeff Warwick from Clients First Business Solutions. I am the Managing Partner for Sales and Marketing, and here to discuss today, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. Um, this is a software system published by Microsoft, the next evolution of Dynamics NAV. It was announced on March 13th with general availability a few weeks ago, specifically April 2nd of 18. And we looked at this session today for the next 20 to 30 minutes, if you will, as kind of like a public service announcement. Um, you know, there's been a lot of uh, correspondence and there's been a lot of dialogue about what's happening with NAV, so we thought it prudent to uh, share with our NAV clients and NAV prospective clients and anybody who's using NAV um, at a very high level what Dynamics 365 is. And specifically, the objective today is to accurately communicate, I would say, what 365 Business Central is, what it's not, and to manage expectations going forward. Now, in terms of managing expectations, let me manage expectations for our time together today. Um, what we are looking to do is share what I would call salient information. It is the most distinguishing parts of what a Dynamics 365 Business Central is. Um, it is not a deep dive demonstration. It is a, not a technical discussion. Those webinars will be forthcoming, but we simply wanted to share some distinguishing factors so that we all were on the same page, if you will. Uh, we're not looking to, as I would put it, provide what we call sales and marketing fluff. Um, it isn't about a feature, a benefit, and all the reasons why you want to buy this system, although we do think very highly of it. Again, it's really just to give the, uh, the most important information as we see it. So it's important to consider before we get into the substance of Business 365, I'm sorry, Dynamics 365 Business Central, that Dynamics Nav still exists. So we didn't want to alarm anybody with this uh, information, and we wanted to let them know that NAV still exists. NAV 2018 still exists. It exists as on-premise. It exists, as we all probably have become accustomed to, as a perpetual license, which really means you buy it once and you pay your annual maintenance fee, albeit reluctantly for many. And it is available as an application software for subscription license, which is a per user per month for the application software. This software, as we know, can also be hosted in the cloud, which is a uh, uh, growing in, in, uh, in, in leaps and bounds in terms of the way uh, accounting and ERP software is delivered. It's also important, I think, to appreciate that Microsoft has 2.7 million end users of this system across 160,000 customers worldwide. It is the most widely used of their uh, accounting software or ERP software portfolio. They do have four products, uh, and that's important to appreciate, I think, because um, they're doing a lot of things with this, and they see a lot of market potential uh, and business benefit for the, uh, for the end user community. I also want to share that they have it, what we would call a healthy support life cycle for the existing products. So again, I don't think anybody needs to be nervous about division going away or nav going away or it not being supported by software. Specifically, if you take a look at this, uh, this chart here and we take a look at, uh, well, for example, nav 2018, we can see that the mainstream support end date is currently scheduled for January 10th of 2023 with extended support all the way through 2028. For those that may not know, mainstream support means that they provide, if you uh, would like to download, uh, service patches, um, update code, upgrade code as it becomes available. And what extended support means is that um, if anybody was to find after the mainstream support end date that there is a significant bug or something potentially uh, limiting in the software, Microsoft will address it. So we can see even if we go down to Microsoft 
uh, now 2009, that we have an extended support through 2020. So I just wanted to share that information before we get into the, uh, the substance of uh, Business Central. In order to appreciate Business Central, I thought it might be helpful to just rewind a bit and give a little bit of history and context of Navision and, and where it's been and, and where it's going. It started actually back in Denmark in 1983. And uh, interestingly, that is about the time that I got into the microcomputer accounting software industry. And it was a DOS-based system. Uh, it came over to the United States around 1995 as a Windows compliant or Windows accounting software system. And it was brought over as what we call client server uh, version. What that meant was that you could actually not only have CPU processing at the client or personal computer, but also at the server level. And the benefit of that was performance, that it actually became one of the, uh, the faster systems on the market. Uh, there was a rapid adoption by the end user community by virtue of value-added resellers or VARs like ourselves, um, selling it and implementing it and supporting it. And the marketing tagline, interestingly, and I remember this distinctly back in the late 90s and early 2000s, was business software your way, specifically the ability to mold it to whatever requirements or functionalities or features that you might want specific to your business. Now, let's take a look at what this really meant and why this was of value. Now, in order to appreciate that, I'm going to start with understanding and sharing at a very high level the construct of Navision. As many of you on, on the, the, uh, the webinar may know, <clears throat> Navision was provided in what we call objects, and there were tables. Tables is where we stored information. Forms, which is now known as pages um, in the Roll Taylor client, was the actual screens of information that we see. Reports is self-explanatory. Data ports was an ability to send information out of the system and receive information into the system from external systems. Code units is where the business logic actually reside. And what this provided was the ability for um, partners and VARs like ourselves, and even end users, if they so choose, to be able to modify the software in a relatively easy way. So that if I wanted to create new fields, I wanted to create new pages, I wanted to create new functionality, I could. We were encouraged to modify Navision our way, and the benefits really were we were able to make it really, if we wanted to, fit like a glove relative to the, the needs and the workflow and the functionality of our system. So we could actually have efficiency from a functional area or department, departmental uh, perspective. And if all the de departments actually made the software fit like a glove for their needs, <clears throat> we could actually have a potentially holistic efficiency across the organization. And that was one of the key and primary benefits of the construct of Navision and the way it was presented to the marketplace. The trade-offs, however, with every benefit, there's a trade-off, is we have found over the years when we talk with uh, prospective clients that are already using Navision that many of these changes, many of these modifications, they, they were just done because you could, but they were undocumented. And that caused challenges, as we may know, many of us on the webinar today, whenever we wanted to upgrade or update our system. Many times the changes were not even, we don't even remember why we made the change. What was the business case for the change? And sometimes we even found that the modifications themselves were poorly designed and poorly created. Now, that is subjective to some extent, but I would say that the equivalent could be, I don't know, an artist that, two artists that are going to paint a, a picture of a lake. One is going to look entirely different than another, and the approach and strategies are different. Now, the trade-off here, what I'm building to, and many of us can relate to this, and I know it resonates, is that the retrofit of those modifications during an upgrade became relatively expensive. Um, estimating the upgrade cost was really challenging. And staying current, quite frankly, and we saw this across the board over the years, it became impractical because we were really version locked to the modified source code and software that we had. What you're looking at here, and just for example's sake, is a database comparison tool that we've used for years that actually was able to take a version of NAV in an old version and take a look at all the changes. 
And what we'll notice a few columns over on this spreadsheet is that there's a column called percent of changes. So every time we went to do an upgrade with a client, we'd have to take a look at all the changes, have a conversation about what changed, what didn't, do we want to bring it forward? Do we want to enhance it? Do we want to get rid of it? This is an example of modified tables. So these are tables that Navision came with natively and then were modified. Or let's say that we actually wanted to create our own tables. And you can see that there was a laundry list of tables and obviously they were 100% changed. So the, the strength and the weakness, let's examine that for a minute. The strength of NAV, as one of my colleagues would say, was it is it extremely flexible. The weakness of NAV was it was extremely flexible. You know, we kind of wanted our cake and eat it too, if you would. Um, another of the strengths was that the third party publishers or independent software vendors, we call them ISVs in the in industry, and VARs could easily develop and they could easily customize. Many functional add-ons were created, uh, many of us know this, to, to fill native functional gaps within the vision. Things like automated shipping and receiving via barcodes come to mind, or you know, handheld computers in the warehouse. Um, usable commission functionality. So many of us on the call today know that uh, the native uh, commission functionality is, is so rudimentary, it really isn't practical for, for use. And many verticals were created too. Um, some of us might be using, I don't know, industry specific software for uh, rental management or chemical or food industry or one that I have a favorite is winery, uh, construction providers, uh, et cetera. But the, 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 the trade off and in, in, in NAV's weakness was, was version control. Several add ons with many mods, quite frankly, and this is just my opinion, I'm sharing it, equaled version control nightmare. And you know what customer has what now version? They're all over the place. What ISVs do they have? What versions? What modifications were made? And do they play nice with the current nav version? And do they play nice with the ISVs? I think many of us have been through this uh, this challenge together. And so staying current really became impractical. But Microsoft realized this, and I know they realized it a long time ago. But now here's where we're heading with um, Business Central, Dynamics 365 Business Central. It is an evolution of Dynamics Nav. It's more than just a rebranding. Um, it's actually an application and a platform. We'll talk more about platform in the future webinars. But it is the next generation of Dynamics NAV. And it brings the full power, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> of Dynamics NAV to the cloud. And it is available currently in 14 countries and regions. Um, there are so many more that will follow. And it is more than just rebranding, as I said, and it's more than just NAV on steroids. All the native functionality lives in the, in the database, of course, but here's the key. Almost all custom development, I say almost all, because there's always some that can't, but almost all can be created as what's known as extensions. The modification can live outside of the database. And what that says theoretically and will be practically as well is we won't have to worry nearly as much about the retrofit of modifications into our NAV and, and, and uh, business central system. So the benefit is that the core system will be able to remain current while the extension, extensions can simply attach and work. It's really a great vision, and now it's really a great reality uh, that's available from Microsoft. And further benefits, they're going to be renting the software via software as a service. Some of us may know the term, some of us may not. SaaS that does mean software as a service. What that means is, uh, for a per user per month fee, you can rent the application software. Um, it's no no longer capitalized. It can be expensed, uh, just like you are paying a phone bill just like you're paying an electric bill. It's perpetually updated by Microsoft because they can. They're not going to be affected anybody's uh, modifications that are extensions. And it can, you know, these, these apps can be purchased, uh, be, it can purchase and publish add-on extensions as an app. So many of us now with our, our, our phones are able to see an app, search for an app, 
find an app, try, buy, download. And uh, that's exactly what Microsoft wants to open up um, to the end user community. Specifically, there's a website called AppSource. And what you'll see there is that you're able to discover what it is you're looking for. You're going to be able to click and try and then ultimately just download and buy and it will work and work immediately. I think personally think this is a great, great strategy uh, for the direction of NAV. What we're looking at here is the actual um, screen or, or web page, I should say, for AppSource. And you're going to see um, that it has a, a selection by category or a selection by industry. I'm going to give you an example of this. Let me go to the AppSource web page. We'll just wait as that comes up. And let's hope it does come up. <laughs> All right. Demo hell, everybody. <laughs> I will try again. There we go. So here we are in a, a live page of um, AppSource. And we'll see again that we have categories and we have industries. So let's say for conversation's sake, and we mentioned earlier that commissions is not a very robust piece of functionality in the native, uh, in the native system. So I would like to find what options might be published for commission functionality. I'm typing and there's a little bit of a, a lag here. And if I travel down the screen, what you'll see is we have hits and results. And so there's a commissions piece of functionality from Navex, commissions from Ellipse, commissions from um, Sickage. And here we'll be able to explore, evaluate, and try and ultimately buy and download a particular piece of functionality. I'll also suggest that maybe, for example, and we know that, uh, all, that, that um, the software does not come with uh, any credit card functionality to speak of. So let's say I wanted to purchase and download some credit card software for Business Central. I simply type that in and let's see what we have. We have a variety of options for which we can download and have it used automatically, or as my friend Chris would say, automatically, right Chris? Sure. Um, in, in our software. A really, really great strategy, a really, really great idea. Some noteworthy items that I think are worth uh, worth discussing here today. The licensing for Business Central is on a named user basis. We have become so accustomed in the Navision and the NAV world that we have concurrent sessions. Uh, that will be no longer the case. Uh, when we go down this road, it's going to be named users. The uh, subscription licenses cannot be shared, but they can be accessed through multiple devices such as not only our, our, our computer at the office, perhaps, or laptops, but also phones and iPads. It is available, at least currently, only as an online service, only as software as a service, and only available through certification or certified partners that have the CSP or Cloud Solution Program certification. So for anybody that um, wants to talk to their partner about this, um, it would be important that you know that the partner is certified to provide this. Let's talk about the, the nature of the, of the licenses themselves and the flavors of the software. There's two flavors for full users, and there's one flavor of what we would call an additional user. So specifically, and if I bring my cursor down to here, if we take a look at essentials, essentials essentially is everything except manufacturing and service order management. Premium is everything inclusive of manufacturing and service order management. And then we move over to this term called team member. Some people might remember it being termed as light user once upon a time. I'm going to take a moment to actually describe in detail the team member functionality so as to prevent confusion in the future. And what I mean by that is I remember when we had light users uh, several years ago, it was a significantly less expensive license. 
So of course, everybody would want to know, well, what can I do with it and what can't I? So let's deep dive for a moment on the team members. Specifically, team member capabilities means I can read anything within the database. I can update existing data or entries. And I'm going to read this verbatim. Existing data or records like customer, vendor, or item records which are already created. Entries means entries on which it is specifically allowed from an accounting perspective to update specific information. For example, due date on a customer ledger entry. So I think you're starting to see, as long as I'm not transacting or processing, that's really the governing strategy and approach. I can approve or reject tasks in all workflows assigned to a user. By the way, there's new functionality that we'll get into in a subsequent webinar called Flow. It is a native workflow component within Business Central. I can create a quote. I can edit or delete a quote or create, edit, delete personal information. Again, I'm not transacting. That's not what I'm doing. I can enter a timesheet for a job and I can use something called Power Apps for Dynamics 365. I'm just going to take a moment because many people might not know what Power Apps is or means. It is not necessarily unique or specific to Business Central. It can be used across many different applications, but Business Central is going to be leveraging it. And let me again read verbatim the first bullet here. <clears throat> service for, it is a service for building and using custom business apps that connect to your data and work across the web and mobile without the time and expense of customer, custom software development. The key is, if we want to develop utilities, and again, we'll deep dive on this in a subsequent uh, web presentation, the time to value can be very rapid. And if we can conceptualize for a moment, it's giving us the ability, for example, to easily link and easily leverage not only Business Central information, not only the Business Central extensions, but also it could be Excel information. It could be any Microsoft Office program. It could be SharePoint. It could be Flow of what I just discussed. So more to follow on this, but um, that is, again, uh, another component of the, uh, of the, uh, the lower cost uh, option for a license. You know, over the last several years, many of us have seen the, the, as, as the new versions of Navision, or I'm, I'm sorry, Dynamics 365 came out, so often it wasn't an introduction of new functionality or even significant improvements of existing functionality. It was technology-based, you know, getting into the role tailored client, being able to ultimately have it published to a iPhone easily. Um, but I can say that with, um, with Business Central, there are significant new improvements to functionality and there will be more over time. And again, we will deep dive into that into the future. In terms of a go forward plan, and just again to manage expectations here. So here we are in the spring of 2018, 2018, and Business 365 Business Central is here. And notice Dynamics Map 2018 is still alive and still well. In the fall of 2018, we're going to, of course, have and continue to have Business Central and Business Central is going to be the new name exclusively for NAV. So there's a total rebranding and there's a total uh, remarketing, if you will, of what's going to happen. But it is all about really the substance of NAV as the foundation with significantly more features, functionality, and benefit. And by the way, in the fall, we will be able to have not only uh, hosted, as I previously described, but also an on-premise version. Future abilities then are, as I said, on-premise or hosted, ability to modify the database. So currently, <clears throat> you cannot. And this is a key differentiator. The strategy, as I said, was not to be able to modify the database, but Microsoft knows that there are those that are going to need and or want to continue to modify the database. It's also uh, going to provide for what we call a common data model. Now, the market has been clamoring for this for a long time. Let me explain in layman's terms what that means. Many of us may know that we have our NAV or Navision or Dynamics 365 database, but let's say I wanted to use what was previously known as Microsoft CRM, Customer Relationship Management. 
now known as D365 Sales. That was a separate database. And if I wanted to have information uh, from one system affect another, I needed to marry certain information or touch points between the two databases. Microsoft's vision and what they're looking to accomplish is finally to be able to have all this functionality coming from one database for efficiencies purposes, low cost approach to getting information. The same thing, for example, with a new product that they have introduced called Dynamics 365 for marketing, which is a marketing automation tool, or Microsoft Dynamics 365 for field service. I think you get the idea. I wanted to share too, just for perspective, the pricing that is published on their website, and, the, and it is a uh, nothing to hide here. What they're looking at is that the premium uh, price for a per user per month for premium, including service management and manufacturing, is $100 per user per month. Essentials is and will be $70 per user per month. And team members, again, that lower functionality, lower cost item I talked about before, is $8 per month. Now, as you would suspect, Microsoft would uh, would like to see many people convert over to this over time. And as an incentive, and a for what it's worth, um, I have a graph here which shows that the on-premise to online for any of the existing on-prem software systems, when we take a look at the price of $100 per user per month for premium, over here on the right side, they're offering $60 per user per month. Essential at $70 per user per month. <clears throat> if we convert before, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, June 30th of 2020, $42 per month. And the team members go from eight to, we'll round it to $5. So I hope that makes sense to everyone. And so with that, I just wanted to let, let you know that there will be more to follow. Um, we will be in contact with regard to events such as a Business Central Overview demonstration where we can actually deep dive on some of the unique capabilities and functionality of, um, of this software, Business Central. We are planning to have a user group meeting in the not too distant future where we can all gather collaboratively on site somewhere and really uh, get everybody apprised of all things going on, NAV and Business Central. And of course, we always invite and solicit any conversations that you'd like to have about your unique interests or unique requirements or to determine how cost effective it would be or not to even consider converting to this to this model. So for more information, you can see my name there. We have a full staff here that's ready, willing, and able to chat with you. My email is jwarwick at clientsfirst-us.com. My phone number anytime is 732-497-9913. So with that in mind, I would like to open up this up to questions. And do we have one, David? Uh, we just have one question so far. Um, someone's asking for the presentation material. And, and yes, after this uh, webinar here, you will be getting an email in the, by Monday um, with the recording of the webinar as well as the, the actual deck. That was an easy answer, David. <laughs> that was easy. Any other questions? Oh, do I see three? Uh, we have a question regarding, is, is there a product demo available currently? You can get a trial, a free 30-day trial online by going to the Microsoft website, looking up Business Central, and you can download it and play with it to your heart's content. We also have a, another question regarding, um, will Jet Reports still integrate to Dynamics? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Jet still to go to, uh, Jet Express embedded, and Jet Professional and Enterprise will still be available. Thank you. More questions. <clears throat> going once, going twice. Well, I'd like to thank you all. Um, again, this was our client's first public service announcement <laughs> concerning Business Central. Chris, did you have something else to share? Yeah, there's another question. When can you upgrade me? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is uh, just give us a call. <laughs> uh, yeah, yesterday. Um, so yeah, please give us a give us a call, um, and I'd be happy to help you with that uh, conversation. Anything else, Chris or David? No. Any more questions online? 
Well, Robert, just uh, someone's asking, um, explaining the, the capabilities and functions. Um, so yes, as Jeff mentioned, we will have subsequent uh, webinars uh, to deep dive in, into functionality. If you have any specific questions um, and you'd like to see something you know, live yourself, feel free to email either myself or Jeff, and, and we'll put you in touch with, with someone who can give you the, the answers you need. Yeah, and we'll definitely be putting forth a webinar to walk people through it. Um, I, know, I will in share your future. Yeah, and, and I will share this. There's a lot happening um, with this this software, and there's a lot happening relative to the term platform. That it's going to be significantly more than just business software, but the ability to use it in ways never even imagined for business efficiency and business improvement. So we see a whole series of deep dive, uh, deep dive webinars happening over the next several months and even perhaps years. Mm -hmm. And you know how when you send a text to someone, and we all do this, and you type a word and that word highlights because it knows there's an image or an emoticon that you can send. Think about that same thing happening in your daily life at work. When you're typing an email or typing a document in Word and you type the name of one of your customers and it highlights and you click on it and it takes you to the customer record. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that the unstructured will become structured data in your ERP system. And that is the future vision of the Microsoft solution. And we're getting closer every day. And we look forward to bringing you more information on this in future webinars. There's just one more question that popped up. Uh, Lan Lanham eShip mm -hmm. um, compatibility. Yeah, so Lanham, I just spoke with uh, Lanham last week, as a matter of fact. And they are on the verge of releasing their system in an extension environment. Um, still going to and fro with regard to QA and dotting the I's and crossing the T's, but absolutely and positively, that is the direction, not only of, of Lanham, but any partner, ISV, third party that wants to play anymore is going to be going down this road. After Yes, exactly. Chris reminded me of a term that we used to use many years ago, adapt or die, just like the dinosaurs. <laughs> so, we, we think all, all of the ISVs are going to have to adapt. <laughs> that is correct. All right, very good. That seems to be all the questions. So once again, thank you all for joining. Um, I will be following up again with a another email with a recording and a copy of the deck that you guys saw today. So thank you all for your time and, and have a good rest of your afternoon. Thank you all. Bye-bye.